You lose your grandmother, what are you, 19, 20 years old? 19, at the time? 19. 19 years old at the time. Let's talk about your descent because you mentioned something. You said years later, five, six years later, you, you find yourself waking up on a basement floor with 93 cents in your pocket. Multiple baby mamas did a stint in Rikers. How does your life, a college student, someone who is, is on the fast track to success, I get that the catalyst, your grandmother, right. that's the catalyst. That, that started you on this descent. But walk us through, how do you get to a basement floor five, six years later with 93 cents in your pocket? Like, you know, yeah. what, what, how did you wind up in Rikers? How many yeah. kids do you have? How many baby mamas do you have? Yeah. This is what, what I just find fascinating. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the first thing is we don't look far down the road and ask ourselves, will the errors in my present judgment, how would that affect me years down the line? We don't really pay that far attention to down the road, right? Mm -hmm. So we make all these decisions now that we don't weigh the cost. I was talking to somebody the other day and I said, you know, if the day that I ate a hamburger, I had a heart attack, I'd be a little bit more strict about my diet. But because I don't have a heart attack the initial time that I eat the hamburger, I'll just keep eating those hamburgers. Here's what life says, it's okay, but I'm gonna give you the compound effect of your neglect in your health years down the line and you'll pay with a significant penalty. And so that's exactly what happened to me. I'm making all these wrong decisions. I'm doing all these wrong things. And then on top of that, I'm living with guilt, shame, fear, frustration. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to do it. I don't know how to do it. And the compound effect of my uh, indecisions, the compound effect of my not sound decisions caused me to be at that place at 25 years old, uh, every reason to do well, but failing in life. How many kids? At that point, when I finally woke up at 25, I had three daughters. I had three daughters by three different women. Okay, so you were all the way out there. At this it was point. all the way out there. Yeah. <laughs> all, all the way out there. How'd you wind up on Rikers? Uh, the, it's a long story, but a short, the short end of it. And, I worked and, and I'm sorry to cut in. For anybody who is watching this that does not know what Rikers is, Rikers Island is a correctional facility in New York City. Back to you. Well, yeah, so I, I, the, the short end of it, I, I work for a bank. Um, and that's kind of like where I was heading at my earlier age, my earlier time in life. I wanted to be in a financial institution, uh, you know, um, financial advisor, working with money, et cetera, et cetera. So I started off in a bank. Long story short of it, we had a client come in that had some fraudulent checks that at that particular time, I wound up cashing these checks that he actually stole from multiple people. I mean, he was actually in the news recently for some fraud. And I'm like, this guy, 20, almost 25 years later, is still doing the same exact thing. And I wound up cashing the checks for him they weren't supposed to be cash. They had, they needed their whole time. Bank thought I was in cahoots with the guy, you know, another African-American male, unfortunately. I wound up not having the money for sound counsel, taking the charge, having to pay back restitution, couldn't pay the restitution back. They wound up remanding me, put me in Rikers for a few. So you're telling me, you know, in, in this whole scam culture we live in, this is normal. This is normal. Yep. This is normal right. now. People yeah. are, are, are scamming left and right. They're Guy scamming. comes to the bank, hands you a check. You think it's legit. You cash it. Have nothing to do with this. Nothing. Whatsoever. Right. And you find yourself charged and not having adequate count counsel winding up in jail behind this? Yeah, exactly. And it's it's funny that we, I mean, we can talk about all of the stuff that's going on now, not having adequate counsel, but think about not having adequate counsel in those bank and financial institutions where they yep. feel like you're stealing other people's money or they feel like you're stealing uh, the bank's money or any kind of money. They're trying to send you away, you know, for, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 dollars. They're going to try to send you away for the maximum. And so what wound up happening is I'm young. I didn't really know what was going on. 
you know, got a regular attorney and he's like, listen, take the charge, you know, petty larceny, petty theft, et cetera. Uh, you'll be okay, but you just can't work in a financial institution in 10 years, but they're going to charge you also for you to pay back this restitution because you was a part of this. And I'm like, you know, but once you plead guilty to something, you are a part of it. You're in cahoots of it. So I was right. on the hook for money that I had nothing to do with. Damn. It, you know, it, it, before we move on, it, it's so sad because your story is just ever so common in our communities. You know, the, 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 these attorneys, especially the ones that are, are given to you by the government, they're overworked. They have so much on their plate. And everything for them is, let me just get this off of my plate. And the best way to do that is, you know, convince my client to take a plea. And right. here it is, you know, your case, like so many others, innocent young brothers and sisters find themselves clueless to the law, clueless to the long-term ramifications of right. saying I did something that I didn't do. Right. But if I take this to trial, I'm looking at, you know, 10 Easy. plus years or so. Easy, yep. You know, it's, it's, it, I'm so sorry to hear that you got even caught up in that situation. Tell me about the day and the actual day, if you can remember, being in the basement, 93 cent in your pocket, waking up and having to look at life and saying, I need to make a change. Like, what was that day like? What, why was that day any different from any other day that you lived? Yeah, man, it's incredible that you bring that up because I've been, you know, with the whole pandemic going on, I've been able to connect with a lot of my emotions and a lot of things that has transpired in my life in certain points. So I'm able to go right to that, that, particular, that particular day. And I remember waking up and saying, you know what, man, I can't live like this anymore. But here's the challenge that most of us deal with. We can't live like this anymore but we don't have an image of what we do want to live like. So because we don't Ooh, know- what hold, we up, do hold on, hold on. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Ooh, Jermaine. Say that again, and I want you to say it slow because I want somebody who is listening to, under, because that is the root, that is the root cause of why so many people can't advance in life. Exactly what you just said. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, I, I woke up and I was trying to figure out what I really wanted to do with my life. And the reason why I couldn't get, or the reason why I believe that most people can't get what they want out of life is because they're so centered on what it is that they don't want. And they don't have the image of what it is that they actually do want. So they can't paint, paint the picture. You see, we live in images. If you say something, you automatically see the image of what it is that you say. That's why words have power and people are just speaking things loosely, but they really don't realize what they're speaking. So if I don't have an image of who I wanna be, I can't speak myself to that particular person, that particular place, that particular goal, that particular dream. So that day, I knew I didn't want to live like this anymore, but I finally said, this is who I really want to live like. And I was willing to do something what most people aren't willing to do, Sean. They're not willing to give something in exchange for where they are to get to where they want to be. They would rather stay in a known hell than venture off to a strange heaven because they simply don't know. So that morning when I woke up, I said, listen, I don't want to live like this anymore, but I definitely have to decide what I do want to live like so that I can at least start to go in that direction of that dream, of that goal, and of that idea. What's up guys, thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.